two, three. So now when you put you know, a bandage or a coating on the skin, you know it's there. You can feel it, you can see it, and sometimes it can even be uncomfortable. What we've been able to do is create a cream, basically, that you can put on the skin. And then once it's on the skin, it can actually form essentially an elastic second skin. Hello. My name is Thomas, and this is Navid. We are inventors in the Lemelson MIT Student Prize competition. Dreams meet reality, where digital meets physical. It is a central place to sync any type of device and to display its content from all sides. You can play games with family, connect across generations, work together cooperatively, or compete head to head. Make education an engaging experience. Locate the plug and plant in a sunny wall. Plant your plugs. Enjoy the beautiful process of watching them grow. Then cultivate fresh and nutritious vegetables. Thanks to Plug and Plant's modular design, you will be able to connect as many panels as you like so you can transform any space into an incredible natural ecosystem with a wide variety of species you can use for culinary purposes, decoration, or even to grow your own medicinal plants. The challenge with designing an ingestible robot is finding and amenable 
to the types of operations that are needed from the robot. To demonstrate how the robot works, the researchers folded the structure into a capsule made of ice. The ice capsule travels down the esophagus into the stomach where the ice melts away and the robot unfolds to its functional form. At this point, the robot can be controlled by an external magnetic field to do work, such as the removal of a foreign object from the body. For example, every year 3,500 swallowed button batteries are reported in the U.S. alone. The tiny batteries are digested normally, but if they come into prolonged contact with the tissue of the esophagus of the stomach, the batteries can burn the tissue and become embedded. Now, using the team's new robot, the battery could be removed without surgery. Once inside the stomach, the robot could be directed to attach to the battery it could lift the battery from the stomach coating and then eliminate it through the digestive system. This, you can stop. This is D3O, okay? So what D3O is, is a non-Newtonian fluid. And what that means is it's a fabric that absorbs impact. So it's very soft, but upon impact, it goes hard. So it's very soft to touch. And if you look down here, it's very soft. But if I hit this, it goes rock hard. So how do I demonstrate that? Well. If I take a lump of this, and then I get maybe, I put my finger here, and I, I use this, actually no, fuck it, let's use this. So now if I go like this, I'm going to chop my finger off, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to use a lump of steel, and I'm going to hit my finger with a lump of steel. Normally that would break my finger, but actually because D3O, it absorbs the impact. D3O into the inside of the case, so look for the orange line, you can see it. Now what does that mean? Well what that means is you don't break your phone anymore. So if I was to drop my phone on the floor, it doesn't crack. Can you show it again? It doesn't crack. Oh my god. So it doesn't crack, and it doesn't crack the screen. I can throw this as high as I like, and it doesn't crack the screen. Well, what? Because, because it absorbs the impact. Our objective is to design self-assembling and self-reconfiguring uh, robot systems. These are modular robots uh, with the ability of changing their geometry. If we do not know ahead of time what the robot will have to do and when it will have to do it, it is better to consider making modular robots. And so the approach that we chose is to use angular momentum. And essentially what that means is there's a spinning mass that spins inside the robot. We want the robot to move, it stops that spinning mass, which takes that motion from the mass and applies it to the robot. The robot doesn't have to be in a certain position in order for the force to be active upon the robot. And in our robot, we found it kind of an accident that they're able to jump. We weren't intending to do that, but it ends up that we need enough momentum inside each cube in order to move on a lattice structure, which we, is what we intended, that we can also, when we apply as much energy as possible, those are transferred over a wireless link, like your Wi-Fi system in your house, and then the cube responds to that. In the future, we envision putting the algorithms on the modules themselves so that they completely autonomously, in a distributed fashion, decide how, when, and where to move. Though this method of using reaction torques is similar to the one that is used to stabilize satellites in space, due to gravity, the algorithms used here are very different. With this setup, the cubely can robustly balance around its corner while rejecting disturbances, rotate while balancing, and balance on its edge. Balancing on a corner is achieved through two subsequent jump-up maneuvers. The first maneuver raises a cubely from one of its faces so that it balances along one of its edges, and the second raises it from its edge to one of its corners. In addition to balancing, the motor torques can be used to achieve a controlled fall, such that the cube can be commanded to fall in a specific direction. Combining these three abilities, jumping up, balancing and controlled falling, allows the cubely to walk across a surface. 